Hey everybody, we're here with Jared Lichten in Cleveland, Ohio, going through one of his uh, fix and flips, one of his rehabs. You want to introduce yourself, Jared? What's up, guys? My name is Jared Lichten. As this huge car rolls past, I'm a real estate <laughs> investor from Cleveland, Ohio. I uh, started investing in real estate in like 2012, right after I got out of law school. Worked as an attorney for a couple years and I pretty much started flipping houses on my own. Quit my job in 2015. Now I'm a full-time real estate investor. Me and my general contractor, which I met back in 2017, uh, we basically transitioned from doing these single family fix and flips into even bigger projects. I do stuff with other investors. I do partnerships, apartments, all sorts of stuff. So I run my own construction company now and I do projects for myself. Uh, I, uh, I got a lot of stuff going on. So this is my biggest flip uh, in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Uh, it's uh, Belvoir. I bought it for 166,000. Uh, it was a private sale. Um, our rehab's about halfway through, so you'll get a chance to see like what a 50/50 flip is like. And then um, we are putting about 130 to 140 thousand dollars into it. I know when I say that, it's probably going to end up being 150. But you know, it's just how these things go. You know, construction is very tricky, and you have to have really, really good people working with you. Uh, contractors are one of those things, especially starting out, where you got to be very, very weary of who, you, who you're working with. Um, especially in a city like Shaker, if you're not bonded and licensed and insured, they're not going to deal with you. I mean, that house, as you can see over there, actually go down Rye, see that dumpster over there. Yeah. They got cited by the city and the city turned right around and turned over to our house. And then they started, you know, scheduling inspections with us. So they were definitely working without a permit. We had our permit, but luckily we had to go through a framing, plumbing, electrical and insulation inspection here. That is not typical for something like what you guys uh, might be getting into as your first flip. Um, typically a lot of people, especially in Cleveland and a lot of like these other mid-level markets, they're going to buy something 30, 40, 50 grand. They're going to put about 30, 40 into it and they're going to try selling it for like 120, 150. That's a lot of typical flip numbers um, on your first deal. And uh, you definitely want to not pick up something this large and extensive on your first one. And especially where you're working with a contractor for your first time, um, you want to develop some familiarity and trust with them by like how they like to get paid and how they like to order materials and to make sure you're not getting ripped off and that they're, you're getting a good price and all that. Yeah. Quality has always got to be there no matter what. If you're paying a low price, high price, quality's got to be there. If you're not, you're going to get dinged. You're going to get dinged on home inspection. The home inspection is going to you know, dictate whether or not you can sell the house in the first place. So... Is for this home. So you said you're about 50% way done with this flip? Yeah, so uh, as you can see, we had a lot of framing done in here. We actually had to tuck these uh, 12 by 2s up into the floor joists. And our carpenter, who is really expensive but does great work, uh, again, like you said, you get what you pay for in construction. Um, this whole entire thing had a wall right here, and then you walked right in front of the front door, and you walked right in this freaking coat closet. And it's like such not, like, and this house was built in 65, so it like, wasn't a great use of space. But typically you come in, people like their house a little bit more compartmentalized back in the 50s and 60s, which is kind of like when building codes started to get a little bit uh, more extensive. Um, you know, this had just like parquet floors and like just a bunch of other like dated stuff. As you can see, there's older windows here. We're getting replaced here in a few weeks. Um, it's just uh, pretty much everything other than, uh, you know, this <laughs> pretty much everything in this house. So this is the framing. This is the only thing that's going to stay. We're going to have two columns and uh, it's going to look really nice because that the whole goal of these high end flips is you want to open up the first floor and really get people allowed to see what's going on in the kitchen when they're in the living room and what's going on in the dining room when they're in the kitchen. Just people love that open concept. And if you, what I see a lot of people in Cleveland, they'll pick up something that's dated and they don't give a shit. They're going to open up uh, nothing and they're going to leave this compartmentalized kitchen and they're just going to have the formal dining room, which is really stupid in the first place. You know, just a room this size and that you eat in with a wall right here. And there's going to be no open concept to here. Maybe they'll open up a wall a little bit into a peninsula, but ultimately, I mean, this is 29 by 48. So like when you are 29 by 40 until you hit that brick wall, <clears throat> but like when you walk in, you're going to be able to see this like grand walls, like, op like all the, all the light from those windows come in here, all the light from the living room and the dining room comes in the kitchen. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. There's absolutely no lights on right now. I don't even know if you have electricity <laughs> yeah. on, but yeah, this is so bright in here and it's not even a sunny day. This yeah. Is beautiful. And we still have yet to like rip all these stupid old curtains out. So it, you know, yeah. a lot of the shit is like. You know, not even, you can't even see anything. So, you know, I bought the house, it was super dated. Um, typically when you go through uh, rehab, uh, I wanna give you guys a little bit of the numbers. Um, so I purchased this house as a private sale. Uh, these were family friends of mine. They texted uh, my family and were pretty much just like, hey, I heard your son's in real estate. Um, we're looking to downsize into a condo. Um, do you think you'd be interested in buying our house? 
I showed up not thinking it'd be a big deal. Um, like I do a lot of lead generation, talking to people about their house all the time. I didn't think that this would end up being my biggest project, but they were pretty much just like, look, we've lived in this house since the nineties. You know, we're getting older. I don't like going upstairs. A lot of people in Cleveland and all these other mid markets are getting older. They don't like going upstairs. They have a lot more space than they need to take care of. Like this is a pretty big house for two people. As you'll see, we're just in like one room and uh, you know, it's a lot to clean. It's a lot to take care of. It's big utility bills. It's everything. So a lot of people in their 60 to 75 range are kind of downsizing into either a smaller house, living with a roommate or friend if their spouse has died, divorced, like there's so many different options to like get out of a house like this and, but they wanted a quick sale. They didn't want to work with a realtor. You know, a lot of people, you know, if you're talking to them about a private sale, it's just convince them that, Hey, do you want to pay five, 6% in realtor commissions? No. Do you want to pay, you know, do you want to deal with the city and escrowing all this money for repairs? No. You know, Shaker Heights has the point of sale. So I know um, you wanted to talk about the point of sale program. Yeah, absolutely. Some people may not That's know fine. what a point of sale is. So uh, Shaker Heights is a suburb within Cleveland, Ohio. Explain a little bit what a point of sale is. So the point of sale programs that Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights have, a couple other cities do have it, but you don't have to escrow money. The problem in Cleveland and Shaker is you have to actually escrow a portion of funds to the city before you finish the project. So like basically if the city dings you for 18,000 in repairs, then you're going to have to escrow an extra $18,000 to the city, do the project, pay for the rehab. And then at the end of the rehab, you'll get your 18,000 back. Okay. So typically I have to bring in capital partners sometimes to do that. And now I've built enough familiarity with the cities where I don't have to think about escrowing as much money. They're super lenient with me after Shaker came in and saw the quality of how we did. The, I mean, we had to cut all the floor joists and actually pocket this thing up here if we didn't do that and we were kind of lazy this would actually be about six inches lower and you're going to actually see the freaking header running all the way down which is like not as sexy you typically don't want as much framing to show but we're going to have to dry all around it it'll look beautiful in the end um, and it'll be good support so and then you can see all the, the rest of the framing across we passed all our inspections ultimately you know the city came through they did their plumbing electrical that passed the framing obviously that passed i knew it would and then the insulation which is not that big of a deal okay so is that, that's enough about the point of sale. You guys want to talk about like kitchens and bathrooms and yeah, stuff? Yeah, show us a little bit. So what we're doing here is you have a 12 foot island. You can see we drew it here. It starts here, runs all the way up to here. We got our gas range stove. We'll have a vent coming down, prep sink in the island. Over here, um, I can actually shoot you uh, renderings from the cabinet company that you can actually show on YouTube okay. about what it'll look like. We'll have the fridge here pantry so you walk into the kitchen pantry fridge and then you're going to have your sink centered against this window the biggest issue here that we had to figure out is whether or not we were going to actually take this entire window out or elevate it up and keep it so it's too low you know for the kitchen to be uh, part of here the, the countertops typically are about this high and so we have to take this window out elevate it to be equal to that window and the city's going to allow us to put in similar windows in a project like this we can't do anything different otherwise we have to go in front of the review board which is delayed and you know it just causes a bunch of delays and i'd rather just put in cheaper you know easier actually these windows we're putting in are a little bit more expensive if we wanted to go the cheaper route we'd have to ask the city if we could so why do delays when you're flipping a house kill deals uh, oh i mean you have holding costs and utilities and all sorts of stuff you definitely for this particular house i know the market here it gets super super hot right now because we're going into a time of year what's today like march 24th yeah. so it's getting warmer now and the snow is melting and people are you know their kids are still in school so they can still kind of do their thing a lot of medical industry is running cleveland so like a third of the city is employed by either uh or cleveland clinic and all the doctors get shipped in for their new residency uh assignments in march so i just know how the city works and you know now that it's march april it's a march april may is a really hot time kids are still in school they typically don't get out till june and when it's really hot in the summer you know people People are going on vacations. They're not thinking about buying houses as much. The market still stays pretty good, but I'm really pushing to get this house done by like mid-May. If I can get this done in mid-May, still have like fifty, sixty thousand dollars more to spend. Um, it's a really, really good thing for me because there's houses like this, high end. It's going to look beautiful. Open concept, three thousand square foot, four bed, three and a half bath house. I know about houses like this that are dated. They go on the market. They, they don't even go on the market. They get swept up like that because we're on a really good street. We have a really good area right here, mm -hmm. and I expect I might even get my realtor to list at like that four forty, four fifty mark, just because I know it's going to be that good. And how many so, square feet is this? Okay, so when you're looking at square footage, and the good lesson is to not just check the auditor, you actually wanna have your contractor measure the house. If you think that your house is actually bigger than the auditor says, the auditor said this house was 2590, and it's not. It said it was 40 feet across, I had my contractor measure, it's actually 48. So what happens here 
is let's go into this parlor area. So we have a den here. There's a laundry room, half bath. And you walk in here, this is really nice. So this is why we're looking at $24,000 in windows in this house. You got all these old aluminum sliders. They're not like the right um, size to be just, uh, we have to basically order custom sliders. So that's why things are getting expensive here because everything is custom dimensions. We're gonna put stone over the fireplace. It'll look awesome. There's our plumbing run for the, uh, for the wet bar right here. We're just gonna put a basic piece of granite, lower cabinets, put enough uh, area here for like a little wine fridge. And uh, you know, as you can see, all our plumbing is already complete. Our our sewer lines are going up top. The water's going uh, like this is what good plumbing looks like. If you just want to zoom in here and see like how they solder these joints, these L joint, like everything looks so perfect and straight. And if you go down there, you can see how they like L everything off. It just is. Re this is what good plumbing looks like. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why you didn't use PEX or anything, uh, or chose to use copper? Uh, these are water lines. So typically, um, what we've been doing, uh, and I. I'm not a plumber. So okay. that's the great thing about being an investor. You don't have to know. You just have to know what good work looks like and how much it should cost. That's right. Like that's the best advice I can give you guys. You have to know what stuff should look like and how much it should cost. Like I look at the slider. I'm like, okay, I'm spending 1400 to 1600 bucks installed. But unfortunately it's too wide. So if I want to spend that 1400 1600 I'm actually going to have to frame it in a little tighter and it won't be as much, um, it won't be as much space. So like on, you know, it's probably something more like 2000 to do something like, like, look how big this is. This is like three sliders in one. So like, it's just too old. If you're doing this, I mean, I'm looking to list this house for 400. That's a lot of money here. And like these sliders, I don't even know if I've ever tried to open them, but they're, they're old. They have to be replaced. And if you want to get that top dollar, you have to do everything. Buyers are super picky. Yeah. And especially in a market like this where it is hot, but like buyers can be picky and kind of like pick and choose what they want. They say, oh, this is not good. This is not good. You could literally spend $200,000 on a rehab and they say, oh, I don't really like this color they did right here. Like it's, yeah. you know, people are, you really have to have a strong stomach and not take offense to things. Like I sometimes will have 40, 50 showings before I actually finish out, uh, get an offer. So like 40, 50 showings every single time a realtor is going to submit their feedback. Uh, they might, you might be sitting there for, you know, two months on the computer every single time you get a feedback. Buyers felt this was too small for them or the bedrooms are too small. Like they didn't feel like the rehab was up to stuff. Like you are getting those emails constantly until you get an offer. So you have to have a strong stomach. You can't take things personally. And it's a, it's a very emotional decision because it's their primary residence. It's not an investment property. Oh, exactly. I mean, the, most of the time, this is the only time they're going to be buying a house in their entire life. The majority of people buy either one or two houses and they're done. Yep. Um, it's the most important and financial decision they'll make in their entire life because a lot of the times if they're going conventional they're putting down 10 20 percent and that's most of the time their life savings you know 40 50 60 thousand dollars which is a lot of money for you know most one or two couples down here um either if you're single or you have a husband or wife um so anyways let's get off the of financials for a second and let's at least take a look at what we did upstairs so what we're looking at upstairs, four bed, three bath. I'm gonna start in the, the smaller bedroom and then we'll kind of circle around. Okay. So what you have here, you when you're doing flips, you always wanna be thinking about the floor plan and the flow of the house. And after you do a couple, you'll get a feel for, um, you know, if you take one or two people with you, usually women are way better at it than men about kind of understanding, like literally like take your girlfriend or your wife through a house or your friend through a house and really, really think about if it was your house. That's the best advice I could say is just like when you're looking at a flip, think of it as if you were buying it for your own house. <clears throat> so a lot of natural light in these bedrooms, higher ceilings. You can see they're kind of like vaulted a bit with the roof because the roof is kind of pitched this way. Mm -hmm. So they're textured, which is not as popular, but it's nice and vaulted. <clears throat> so um, this is what you call an ensuite bathroom. It's connected to the bedroom. And this would be the best example of a guest suite. So like if you have guests come over, they have their own bathroom, it's connected. And as you can see, you have tub. So here's your plumbing for the tub, shower head up here, toilet and vanity. Everything's already plumbed in, everything's ready to be drywalled, the electrics up here for your uh, sconces and uh, you know, a nice little window. So this will be uh, like the fourth bedroom. So this is what I call bedroom number four. Ensuite baths are important because sometimes, you know, if someone wants a little bit more privacy, maybe it's like a teenager or somebody who is staying at a house, like a guest, typically you don't like to have them share a bathroom with you. They see your toothbrushes and they see all your rags sitting around. It's like not something you typically like to do. In your prescription creams, right? Oh yeah, you're not mine. <laughs> yeah. 
But a uh, couple little you know things in this house. It's got a laundry chute. A lot of people kind of like this stuff. This house was built in the 60s, so it's got a lot of closet space. Um, as you can see, there were two closets in there. You got one here in the hallway. There was a huge, huge set of built-ins here. And we actually closed this wall off. As you can see, our, our, this is just fresh drywall. We closed this off so you can actually walk into this bathroom from here. So the next part of the, yeah. And when you're walking through a construction site, you gotta be careful. Yeah. It's a good thing that you have uh, construction boots on. <laughs> so um, be careful too, there are nails sticking up. Yeah. So what we're walking into right now is the two back bedrooms. These actually share what's called a Jack and Jill bath. A Jack and Jill being you actually walk through it and more than one bedroom has access to it. Up here, again, vaulted ceiling, but they're not textured. So this is kind of like typically how I like a bedroom to look. Got a little bit of a roof issue here that, like, we're, that we had already fixed up. Went through, demoed out all this closet and smoothed things out. Um, oh, nice. Look at this. Golf. Someone must have liked golf. <laughs> so, anyways, this is a shared bathroom. So, this bedroom has access to it and this has access to it. Really good for if you have a couple kids, if you have um, uh, maybe you did something bad and you need to sleep on the couch, you need your own bedroom for the night. Um, but again, for this is, this is a house for a bigger family. So, ultimately, a bigger family is going to buy this house. And these bathrooms are freaking huge. So we reconfigured everything in here. I think the shower used to be back here. The toilet, I don't even remember, maybe it was where you were standing. But basically we plumbed everything in to have a nice big double vanity here, probably 60 or 72 inch double vanity. As you can see, our electrician's done up here. Our electrician's done everything. So all the runs are done, all the rough wiring for pendants and everything. This is actually the majority of the work has been completed. What we're standing in here is the shower. As you can see, we got um, tile samples from our tile manufacturer and we were kind of figuring um, uh, flooring tile for all the bathrooms to make sure that um, it didn't contrast too much with our vanities that we're ordering. Because I do order a fair amount of vanities and tile and um, fixtures and tubs and stuff off House. I don't know if you guys know House, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. Um, I'm in the trades program, so I actually get like contractor grade pricing on a lot of things and they'll do that for you. So what we're probably gonna do right here is our, our vanities are probably this color, and I really like this, um, but ultimately if you have a lot of bathrooms to do, um, even a dollar or two, um, pr a dollar or two difference on price per square foot can make a difference. So we're probably gonna go with something a little bit lighter that's gonna contrast some of the darker gray vanities because the vanities are kinda like this, um, and I can actually send uh, Marco the links to them so he can actually show you guys what we're ordering for this house. Maybe we'll do an after video in about yeah, two months here. Absolutely. So we got this, and then what we're probably gonna do, we got advice from our realtor. Um, I actually took it downstairs or to another property. So this is not white, this, this color white, but we're doing these long subway tiles, very popular. I think they're like three by 12, and we're gonna just schluter things off right here with like a black metal strip. It's called schluter. Um, it just makes things look really clean. Buyers really love this basic subway tile, but it's getting more extensive to where it can kind of be longer. Um, and so it looks just really cool. It's like that rustic, modern vibe. Um, it's When you're doing a flip, the design end of things, you really want to appeal to the most buyers. You want to appeal to the masses. You don't want to appeal to what you like. Because right. things like this, like there's actually eight different ones of these. And I know this is like very design specific, but these type of tiles we're going to use for the niche. So like a shower niche here to like put shelving in. Um, it's gonna look super awesome. I know I only have two of the tiles here, but the tile manufacturer is actually gonna make us buy boxes of all eight different designs. So it's like, I can't really show you, these are just two of them, but like it's gonna look so cool contrasting with like the white subway tile. It'll probably be like right here and we'll just build a bench back here. So like you wanna ask people questions when you're going through flips constantly. Like now that we're at the plumbing stage and we got all everything plumbed in, um, you want to ask, hey, like, where would you rather see the bench? Bring your realtor and say, hey, what do you think about this shower? They say, oh, we were actually thinking of going diagonal, but I think it might make better sense for us to just do one big slab back here. And everybody does different stuff in the shower. You might be shaving your legs or smoking a joint or just <laughs> sitting there watching TV. There, it, you want to give people the most comfortable options because in Cleveland, people are a little bit bigger than in California. You know, <laughs> I don't know why that is, but, um, you know, people like to... Uh, eat their vegetables. So, um, as you can see, drywall and electrics complete up in here. You walk into bedroom number three. These are big bedrooms. You really wanna think about the size of the bedrooms are a really big deal on a flip. If you get into a house where like you feel really compartmentalized and there's not that many windows, I mean, even right now, you can kinda of tell it's the middle of the day, it's probably about one o'clock, and there's really nice light coming in here. And after we take out and put new windows in, new windows are freaking such a huge deal for a flip. It's just, it gives th that house that like, 
I don't know. It's just something about it. it like, makes it feel fresh. Oh my God. But you can't have a $400,000 house with these old like 60s crank windows. Like <laughs> half the time they don't even work and the locks don't work. It's just, you know, they're too old. If you were just doing this as a rental, I would say you'd probably be fine. But taxes and shaker heights on this house are $12,000 a year. So it's like $1,000 a month in taxes. Things get expensive. So walk in through here. I'll let you go first. Go to the master. I just want to make sure you don't trip on anything. This is the master. Show what we did with the ceiling. You guys did this? This was like this, um, but we had to uh, frame in this closet. So I'll show you real quick. Um, beautiful, like, you know, kind of picturesque. You can see all the way, all the way down to the end of the street here. Um, the, the closets here for the master, there was like one here and one here. Um, and it was kind of odd how they just didn't put them both together. So our architect completely reconfigured this to like bump this wall out probably about a foot, foot and a half. And if you walk in through here, you can see where the wall ended, like right here. And we took this wall back a little bit and actually built in like a his and hers closet. So I'll let you go first. You walk in, um, his and hers closet, you know, you got lights in here, big enough closet for, you know, a master, especially if you have another bedroom. A lot of guys will typically just give up the entire closet and they can have their own closet in another room. Yep. But you walk in here and you see the double vanity. Uh, nice, enough for 60 inch. 60 inch double vanity is more than enough space for two people. Um, sometimes you can get a 72, but again, two pendant lights above. You got all the, um, this is what's called a Bluetooth exhaust fan. And I like to do a lot of these more high end fix finishes and fixtures and these flips because I know the price point and I know what buyers are looking for. So you want, this is the shower, obviously. So you walk in here to the shower and you can have uh, Spotify or Pandora playing on your phone and it'll automatically link up to the exhaust fan and it'll play music. Wow. So you can actually walk in the shower, listen to ESPN or, you know, just chill music in the morning, listen to the news and you get in the shower, boom, it kicks right up in the Do you unit. feel like the younger generations of buyers appreciate stuff like that? Thousand percent, thousand percent. I mean, if you think about the type of things that I'm doing, um, it's so easy. It's so easy to kind of like get these features uh, into a home if you know what you're doing on like the plumbing and electric side, which is like the foundation for a really good rehab project. Um, so I can tell my electrician, hey, can you go ahead and pick up some of these Wi-Fi lights for the lower level? They're 70 bucks and a regular um, switch set is like 20, $22. So like I can spend 70 bucks. I can order AT&T to install internet here. And then I can say, um, I can order Alexa, um, whatever it's called off Amazon, mm -hmm. and I could link it up to say, hey, Alexa, turn the lights on and the lights go on. That's so awesome. you want to like, you can um, advertise it as a smart home almost. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's sexy. You can, I mean, literally there's so many little things that you can do to a house, like the front door deadbolt, they have Wi-Fi deadbolts now where you can literally get a text on your phone when you're at work or like the garage doors open at three in the morning, your teenage kid came home and opened the garage door. Everything should be able to be linked up to your smartphone. And you know, what's messed up like you don't even have to set everything up for them you can just show them that you installed that and you say hey here's the app here's the thing you don't have to deal with downloading all this stuff you can just say hey it's already hardwired for these type of things and it's really really valuable for people so you're almost not even selling them a house you're selling them comfort you're selling them you know feasibility you're selling them like a, an easy life yeah. um so it's a big deal to people and uh, i definitely at least want to do the wi-fi lights on this house we're replacing the front door so we'll probably do the deadbolt too cool. Very nice. so Let's go downstairs. Um, so again, I'll go through the numbers real quick on this project. I mean, uh, we spent about 12,000, 13,000 just on the plumber. The electrician's probably gonna be about 10. We're gonna have uh, four bathrooms, so I don't even know how much we're gonna spend in tile. But uh, the kitchen cabinets we ordered the other day, which I said I'll send to you so you can key up there. This is what the kitchen's gonna look like. So uh, $13,000 in cabinets uh, with hardware. Um, where are those from, if you don't mind me asking? Um, we'll you, you want me to reveal all my suppliers? No, 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 <laughs> not like that. I meant like, uh, like they're where they're nice made. IKEA BS. These are nice. You know, um, I mean, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really matter what the manufacturer is, because every manufacturer is going to have like high end and low end stuff. Okay. Like the cabin, all almost all cabinets you're going to get are made in China and they're shipped over here and actually built here, and then they sell it to you. Okay. So that's kind of like the way, or they're built in China and like 
sent in single boxes and shipped over and then it's up to you to install them. So that's not an installed price, that's just a price you get on the cabinets, but you definitely, you can tell the difference between what you buy off the rack at Home Depot and what you get for a house like this. You definitely wanna to go to a cabinet supplier manufacturer for a house like this, cause like, you're gonna be getting dings and the cabinets won't get the right, if you go to Home Depot, there's just, the, you're not gonna get the right sizes and then it's gonna come back and oh, this is backwards. Like, there's so many different issues you can run into when you buy a set of cabinets at Home Depot, unless you're doing it for like a two or three unit property where it really doesn't matter. If you're doing it for a flip, you know, toe kicks and like things coming out and the appliances have to be, appliances have to be set in the right, like perfect, everything, the granite and, or the quartz has to be perfect. You wanna make sure that everything flows perfectly for a flip and you can't, you can't skimp on things like cabinets. You can skimp on things like flooring, you can skimp on things like paint, but ultimately people are gonna pick your rehab apart if you're even doing things like not, you know, changing the switch plates. I can't tell you how many freaking rehabs I've gone through where like, look at this thing. They'll keep this right here as like a switch plate, even though it doesn't match everything else. And I'm like, dude, like it's such the easiest thing to, you know, go 99% and not go the full hundred. It's just laziness. And it all comes down to money. There's so many people here who are trying to save, you know, they're trying to cut corners and I'd rather spend a little bit more money and make a little bit less if I know my house is going to sell quickly because it's just energy for my construction That's company. Right. They just operate quicker. Kind of penny wise, pound foolish almost. Absolutely. Stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So this was, I really appreciate your time. Um, you want to see the basement real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> yeah. you had a basement. Yeah, we got basement. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Well, the yard is pretty nice too. Well, here, let's real quick. I'll do, show you the office. So this is going to be like a nice little office area. We didn't even go back here. Oh, this house is huge. That's yeah, I know. Yeah, so we got a nice little office area back here. We're going to build some bookshelves over here so you can keep. And we're actually going to have barn doors set here. So everyone loves barn doors. I don't know why. But, you know, it's just like, whoosh, you just feel like a king or a queen, you know. So we're going to set the barn doors up here. Um, probably 68 inches across and then it'll slide all the way out to where the granite's going to end here. So obviously the kitchen's going to look awesome. Yeah, let's check out the basement. So laundry room, no big deal, whatever, but the basement. Boom, already drywalled everything. They had awful paneling down here. We got the new electrical panel uh, set over here with all the runs going upstairs. I paid the uh, homeowner 500 bucks for their uh, uh, pool table. I didn't have to, but I was being kind of nice. So uh, as you can see, they left their pool table and all their pool supplies here. So at the end, I'm gonna pay a pool table company to kind of refelt this. I don't think it's in great shape, but this is cool. This is like nice little chill place. They had like pinball machines here and like, you know, it's a cool basement. It's comfortable. The glass block's new and like- it also helps for staging, I would think. Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, even if you're just uh, having an old rinky dink piano or an old, you know, pool table, it really does do, do numbers, <laughs> do wonders for you. Um, if you want to really look at the mechanicals, <laughs> furnace, here's your humidifier, hot water tank, and as you can see, they ran all new copper for all of this. Up here, hot and cold water, here's the old uh, HVAC, um, and then what they had to take out was all set here. They had like a sprinkler system for the front yard, uh, went out this way. They had uh, all the old uh, copper running right around here, so we took that out, and every like look at how how intently this has to be cut in order to, like that is what you get when you pay really solid money. I can't tell you how, how many times I've seen things done the wrong way. Very good, very good. So that's uh, Belvoir, it's a beautiful house. We can end up in the laundry room and you didn't even see one of the bathrooms. So you got a half bath down here. I will say this, like this is really important. You want a half bath. You definitely want at least a half on the first floor because when you're entertaining and you're having guests over, you don't want to have people ask where the bathroom is and you say, oh, it's upstairs. Go ahead and look at where all my towels and toothbrushes are. You want a nice guest bathroom where just, you know, it's comfortable and clean and all they need is a toilet and sink anyways. And we're in here in the laundry room. That's it. Very nice. Belvoir. The garage is over there. It's not too sexy. You want to see it? <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we are doing a, a dog shower here. Dog We're shower. Dog shower. Yeah. It's that? basically it's a shower basin. we tiled up with like subway tile, probably to about here. It's like uh, it's like a little wash basin with a wand. So like people can come in from the outside. Here's a side door. They come in from the outside, wash their kids' muddy boots off. Um, they uh, wash their dog off from running around in the mud. And it's a huge, huge selling point. It really is. I found that like when you do stuff like that, you know, people, 
I hate to say it on your YouTube channel, people care more about their dogs than their own children. Yeah. So that's a, a premium for it too. Exactly. That's a, I think that's a good point to end on. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. Um, anything else you want to run through? Where can we uh, find you? Are you on social media? Are you on Instagram? Nope. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, I'm on Instagram and YouTube at Jared Lichten, uh, keyed up here on the screen. Okay. Um, I do a lot on Instagram. I'm putting a big focus on putting out a lot of content there. It is very hard to be as busy as I am and without a D-Rock following me around. Maybe I can hire you for a few, <laughs> few weeks. Um, but yeah, man, I just put a focus on putting out really cool, free, valuable content. There's a lot of real estate investors out there that have some BS course or, you know, mastermind they want to pull you into where, you know, you're not getting the value. Like most of the real estate stuff you can find either online for free or on bigger pockets. Um, I'm self-taught. I've never had to buy a course or anything. Obviously I went to law school, so I understand contracts and stuff, but like, come from a real estate family? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope, no See, one in my family is in real estate. I'm, I just got approved to get my broker's license in California. Nice. So I'll be a broker, attorney, investor. You know, I'm, thir cool. I'm 32, so I'm just getting started, man. I go, got man. fire under my ass. I, I'm excited, man. It was a pleasure yeah. meeting you. Yeah, for man. sure, man. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Good luck with the sale. And we'll actually update this once everything's remodeled, once you come back. Um, so typically, what um, Jared's been doing is flying in from California maybe once a month, once every couple of weeks. Um, would it be cool if we ran through this once everything's updated? Hell yeah. We got a bunch more videos to make, I Perfect. think. Yeah. Let's and uh, if you want to have any questions about real estate or investing in my company, just DM me on Instagram, follow me. You know, it's totally cool. Perfect. Thank you so much. See ya.